hurt me, it did several times. It hurts to admit that. Hello everyone, welcome to my new video. In this video, we're gonna talk about the Ricoh Theta SC2 and the Ricoh Theta SC2 business version. So part one, I will give you introduction about the Ricoh Theta SC2 and some of my thoughts about the design and features of this little camera. Part two of this video, I gonna focus on the SC2 business version. I gonna give you an in-depth comparison between SC2 and SC2 business. In part three, I wanna share my tips and tricks about SC2 and SC2 business. My name is Yu Xun Guo, 360 photographer lover and specialize in one shot 360 photography. If you want to start over and master a one shot 360 camera beyond professional, this channel was made for you. So the Ricoh Theta SC2 uh, was released about December 2019. Camera has a highlight finish on the, on the surface, as you can see. The Ricoh Theta SC2 was designed for beginners and some lifestyle shooters like you and me. The Theta SC2 now has four buttons, the power on button, Wi-Fi button, mode button, and the timer button. Apart from the shutter button, we have now an OLED screen that will give you a very good feedback during shooting. The SC2 is even lighter than the first generation and hardware has evolved quite a lot compared with its predecessors. The new sensors, the new imaging signal processors and the new computational platform, the new CPU. Better wireless transfer and exactly the same start speed at around 1.5 seconds. In the SC2, we have a Bluetooth module, which we can control our Ricoh Seed SC2 via a Bluetooth remote controller. Now for the ISO and shutter speed, we have more possibilities compared with the Ricoh Seed SC. The HDR rendering algorithm now has been reviewed and now it has a better imaging quality, less chromatic aberration and less color fringe. And for those users who love snorkeling or diving. Now the Ricoh Seat SC2 has implemented a new white balance called Underwater. The Ricoh Seat SC2 now has a better user experience compared with the Ricoh Seat SC. And for the shooting mode, we still have the auto mode, the ISO priority and the shutter priority and full manual mode. And we still have my settings on the Ricoh Seat SC2 where you can uh, set your individual customized settings inside the camera. So next time we restart, the camera will jump directly to your settings. That will help you save a lot of time. And for the auto mode, there are also some more options such as the noise reduction, the dynamic range composition, and the HDR rendering. And now on the Ricoh Scene SD2, we have three more presets for the users to control your camera uh, simpler and better. Number one is the face mode. Number two is the night view. Number three is the lens by lens exposure. And for the apps on the cell phone, the Ricoh Seat app and the Ricoh Seat Plus, now they have better features such as animated photo and some professional adjustment such as the highlight contrast sharpness and, and so on. Now let's jump to the part two and talk about the SC2 business version. The SD2 business version is almost the same as the SD2, despite some minor changes on the design, the software, and the user experience, and also the target group. The SC2 business version now has a gray finish, so the color is different in design, the same sensor, the same ISP, and the same CPU. There are some differences on the software. When you start up, it will jump directly to the room preset. So the room preset was designed to capture the interior shot every time you start up your camera. And you cannot set individual settings to this camera because the room preset was locked as the default settings. Every time you start up the SC2 business version, it will jump directly to the room preset. What you can change is the timer or the time shift mode. Yes, so that is the only thing you can change on the startup about SC2 business. The time shift feature only comes with SC2 business. And you can also combine the room preset together with 
time shift shooting. The feature My Settings will never work with the SD2 business. It's not that flexible. And with less flexibility, which means that it is more reliable for the professional users, like the virtual tour guys, you will never miss your shot every time you start up your camera. And time shift feature room preset that only exists on the SC2 business version. The face mode, night view, lens by lens exposure, and my settings only exist on the SC2 normal version. Price point for these two cameras are totally different. I know that on worldwide, the SC2 business version is more expensive compared with the SC2, but in China, the the business model is much cheaper than the SC2 normal version. I, I don't know why, it's, it's a little bit weird. The first thing I want to share with you is the conventional shooting mode. Auto mode, we have three more options. Noise reduction, dynamic range composition, and HDR rendering. And on the YouTube, there are no videos talking about these three options. And personally speaking, these three options are the shining points of the Ricoh Theta series. Not only SC2, but also SC, V, and Z1. In the noise reduction, the Ricoh Theta cameras tend to shot four underexposed photos and stack them together inside the camera chipset. The camera tend to shot four underexposed shots to retain more detail in the highlight. Dark side, the shadows has been improved and the signal to noise ratio has been improved a lot. And the final result is pretty good compared with the, a single shot. The Ricoh Theta camera tend to use a lower ISO and a longer exposure to keep the shot clean and sharp. And by stacking, the image will be more clean and sharper. The noise reduction mode has also been implemented in the night view preset. That could help you capture more detail higher imaging quality during low light. The next one is the dynamic range composition. So in the, the dynamic range composition is a little bit tricky. The camera will only take one shot and we apply the extra turn curve adjustment to, to fine tune the image uh, to bring back more detail from the shadows and suppress the highlight. But that these operations was done on a single shot. So the image quality from the dynamic range is not that great, but judging by the first sight, you will feel like that the dynamic range has been improved. But actually, it was a turn curve adjustment by the image, image signal processor. So the real dynamic range has not been changed because in the dynamic range composition option, this camera only captures one shot. And HDR rendering is my favorite feature for the Ricoh Theta cameras. Not only because the Ricoh Theta camera has the best possible HDR rendering algorithm, but also it works fully automatic. And in the HDR rendering mode, the Ricoh Theta will capture four shots with different exposures and stack them with HDR fusion and blend in the final shot. And the stack and fusion uh, will be done automatically in the backstage. And the final shot is pretty good. And the HDR rendering uh, will assume that you are shot on a tripod. Next, let's talk about the essence of every preset. So the face preset could be divided into three parts. A face recognition, a new exposure strategy, a single shot by the face mode. When you are to shoot in face preset, this Ricoh camera tend to overexpose and the Ricoh Theta camera tend to use a higher ISO and overexposed strategy. Extra noise reduction on a single shot. That will make your face look brighter and less noise. Since the shooting will tend to use higher ISO, the final imaging quality will not be that great. But it's good enough for social network. The next preset is the night view. The night view preset is kind of like the noise reduction as we have mentioned in the conventional auto mode. In the night view, the face recognition is also available for the Theta camera to capture your face 
and we we'll put your face in the middle of the equirectangular image. And next percent is a lens by lens exporter. A lens by lens exporter is really tricky and it's not that easy to use it wisely because the, the front and rear lenses will expose with individual settings. That will work really well when you are standing at the windows or you're standing or you're seeing, sitting at the bus window and half of the spherical image will be uh, very bright while the other half will be uh, very dark. Let's talk about the room preset. The room preset is just like HDR rendering, but in room preset, everything was set automatic and the ISO upper limit will be set to ISO 1600. You cannot change the ISO upper limit. So everything was done fully automatic every time you start up your Theta SC2 business model. It is very easy and uh, very intuitive to use in most cases. But when you are shooting in low light or in the uh, after sunset of the virtual tour, the Ricoh Theta SC2 business model tend to use a higher ISO and the faster faster shutter speed. And the room preset will work really well in daytime, but at night or after sunset, uh, if you want the best imaging quality the room preset is not the case. Can we improve the room preset? The answer is yes, because in the conventional auto mode, when you choose the option HDR rendering, you could still set the upper limit of the ISO. You can set the lowest ISO as low as ISO 200. So with auto mode HDR rendering and ISO upper limit as 200, you will have a very high quality in any light situation because ISO 200 was being set as upper limit and the camera will tend to use a longer exposure to, to expose just right. And with longer exposure, lower ISO, the imaging quality will be improved a lot. So for the Ricoh SC2, you can also use the HDR rendering uh, with the lower ISO limit and set that customized settings in my settings. So every time you open up your SC2, although the icon is photo, but when you press the shutter button, it will take an HDR rendering with the lowest ISO limit. And that will give you a much better quality, especially in low light compared with SC2 business model. So this is a really tricky part about SC2 and SC2 business. For those of you who want to make the most, especially on the image quality from SC2 series, SC2 might be a better choice compared with SC2 business version. And if you do need the time shift shooting, that feature was only equipped with SC2 business. And if you cannot live without time shift shooting, you have to buy the SC2 business. Time shift feature is not always working. Sometimes you have shadows in the front lens, although you stand on the rear side, but your shadows falls off to the front lens and was captured by the camera. And you had better control your camera with Wi-Fi or with 10 second countdown timer and hide yourself in this situation. So you will capture the perfect shot with only one click. I prefer to use SC2 HDR rendering, ISO limit as 200, 10 second countdown, totally hide myself in the situation. If you can live without time shift, I think SC2 might be a better choice. Finally, I want to give you some suggestions about the Ricoh Theta SC2. With the mode button on the Ricoh SC2, we can only cycle in between the photo mode, the video mode, and one of the presets that was chosen last time in the app. So uh, actually we have three presets in this camera. Uh, why it's not possible for us to cycle in through all these three presets? Okay, so that is all about my personal in-depth review about Ricoh SC2 and SC2 business. I hope you can learn something and I hope you can figure out the real differences between SC2 and SC2 business. And I do hope you could understand the essence of different shooting mode, the essence of the preset.
if you like this video, please sum up, subscribe, and hit notification bell. I will see you in my next video. Bye.